Okay, so we have had Despicable Me, Despicable Me 2, Minions, uh, Despicable Me 3, Yellow is the New Black, not sure if you guys have heard of that one. And then of course, now we are finally at Minions, The Rise of Gru, which aired uh, today. Um, just saw it, just saw it. Now, is this movie good? Is it bad? What do you, um, all that was anticipated with this, uh, series of movies. Um, okay, so a couple of things, a couple of things to cover, right? This one is a little bit different because it takes place at a time where Gru is a young man, as you can clearly see. Um, this is kind of the origin of how he became a quote unquote supervillain, right? So we're going to loom over the question. Is this actually good? Is it a good movie? Does it get that spot for what we've all been itching for in regards to, uh, movies such as this? Well, first off, you, you might've already guessed that it takes place in the 1970s. Um, really just coordinating amongst the minions doing their shenanigans and their nonsensical acts as they normally do there's a few different characters in here i mean you have some you have some major major stars in this movie and quite a few actually steve carell reprises his role as Gru. um you have jean claude van damme who actually plays a character by the name of john jean claude um taraji p is in this as well she plays a character called bell bottom master you have um Michelle Yeoh, who plays a character by the name of uh, Master Chow. Um, Russell Brand doctor, is Dr. Nefario. Uh, Dolph Lundgren is even in this. He plays a character by the name of Svengeance. I think that the guy's name is Svengeance. And um, Lucy Lawless is Nunchuck. Riza is in this movie as well. And Alan Arkin as Wild Knuckle. And Danny Trejo, Danny Trejo sorry, is um, a character by the name of Stronghold. Right? You introduce these, all of these guys at a pretty early point in the movie. Why? Because they are a group referred to as, not all of them, but um, the majority of individuals I just listed are referred to as a group by the name of the Vicious Six. The Vicious Six. Now the concept behind these individuals um, known as the Vicious uh, Six is they are the sixth worst, worst um, super villains on planet Earth. So um Gru has an objective in mind he wants to join this group seeing himself as the as a super villain as a super villain or an up-and-coming super villain he's more just a villain right now he's not quite super just yet uh, he hasn't reached that status um he wants to join with this group right is and and in him auditioning to join this group he goes about having to prove himself to this group however though it takes a bit of a turn now there's seven major um points to be listed in regards to what i just said right the group called vicious six who wants to join them to become a super villain much like they are because you know it comes with reputation status all of that and then the group betray one of the leaders in the in the of the vicious six called wild knuckle um the group is looking for a new member grew auditions to become this new member they turn him down insult him he goes about proving that he's actually um on par with them by stealing a piece that they had as a medallion right um he steals his medallion escapes from their grasp grew is kidnapped um by by wild knuckle wild knuckle and his people and in him being kidnapped the minions must then find their mini boss or you know their boss who grew funny enough just fired the reason why he fired them is because they messed up the way that they messed up is grew continues to give responsibility to one of the minions called jerry now jerry is jerry's that jerry's that friend that you don't really give anything any level of responsibility to you never give him charge over anything or anyone he's just that person that's just there and you keep him in the corner let him do his own Thing, right he has other minions that you know it'd be better for him to actually give more responsibility to like kevin and kevin seems to be the the, the the most responsible out of the whole group but you know for whatever reason he trusted jerry with this medallion that he stole now jerry loses it by trading 
<laughs> trading it for um this is one part i actually thought was really funny jerry loses it by um trading the medallion that he was holding for Gru, trading it for a pet rock i find that funny because i remember at a time pet rocks were actually a thing it took me aback pet rocks were actually a thing they were a serious thing that you would you would give someone as a gift now the first half of this movie i think is probably the the, the strongest the strongest portion because i thought it was going to center around um Gru and him wanting to join this group only to only to you know realize that he could actually do it on his own or whatnot um i i i, I do like jerry i think i think jerry's ridiculous jerry's jerry's really 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 dumb but his hilarity is is it's just funny to me right um the pet rock throwback love that um the vicious six concept i actually i actually enjoyed that i i enjoyed the concept of the vicious six uh i thought it would have centered more around more around them and more around you know heists and such but you know they they pulled off one or two jobs and then that was that was basically it it was now a matter of capturing Gru, right and then the, the minions in this they they don't seem they don't seem like as they would in in the following despicable me movies or even in the previous minions movies they seem more effective in this case like if they're growing like if they're adapting or they're evolving sorry um as if they're they're maturing even right you see them actually building Gru's lab like like they they have engineering abilities i i i appreciated that because it means that they're they're getting smarter i like that i like that they weren't there just for the butt of the joke that they were actually effective most of them anyway except jerry um the second half of this movie it's it was really just a mcguffin chase right which is which is what i didn't really like with it but you see you see the portion where they became animals that kind of that portion of the movie wasn't really explained they never really told you about what the medallion did they just said okay well there's a medallion we want to steal the medallion the medallion was stolen from us they got the medallion back and now the medallion has powers that you know weren't really built upon right the transformations they, were, they just kind of came out of nowhere um the 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 level of stardom that they had in here you know calling people like danny treo taraji p taraji p henson um obviously steve obviously uh steve carell as well right but other 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 stars like uh, michelle michelle yo lucy lawless Riza, even um alan arkin that's a that's a russell brand right dolph lundgren that's a lot of star power behind this movie and they weren't really utilized i mean like you heard a couple of characters speak every now and then but it felt more like if they were just thrown in for the sake of just throwing them in without actually giving them any level of character development they were just there to be there like they didn't they didn't really build on any other characters other than bell bottom she seems to be more the de facto leader of the group once wild knuckle was out of the picture and beyond that it was just stars for the sake of using voices. Well, I mean, you could have put someone else's voice in there and nobody would have even been any other wiser, right? Um, for the most part, I think this movie was okay. I, I you know, I'd probably watch it again if it was on television. You know, if it was maybe halfway through the movie, but I don't really see myself going back and watching this very much. Uh, yeah, I, I would say that this movie is probably about a solid 5 out of 10. Uh, yeah, just about a five out of ten. It had its it had some very hilarious moments to it without giving any any kind of crazy spoilers to um, the plot. If you want to see, if you want to understand what this movie is about, funny enough, the best parts of the movie are in the trailer. You get the gist of the entirety of the movie from the trailers. They gave away a lot. And they're bold, but I think they're so bold in doing that, knowing that they can give away the movie in the trailers because they know ultimately people are going to watch this. Kids are not going to not want to watch. The minions they're gonna watch the minions regardless because they're, they're you know they're cute what can i say this part right here is my favorite part this part right here except for the rock pet rock part i actually enjoyed this this was this was adorable right um but beyond that i, I would give this a solid five out of ten um it's watchable it's it you know take your kids to watch that i think they would have a very fantastic time but you know, it's nothing. It's nothing that we haven't already seen already. Uh, let me let me know what you guys think though. Whether you think my review was a little unfair or whether you think it was absolutely fair. Um, there is more that transpires in this movie, but it's just not. It's nothing. It's nothing deep. 
you know that's that's basically the gist of everything that happens but i'm anxious to hear your thoughts leave them in the comments and i will see you again for the next one see ya